woke college campuses and the fight for the minds of the emerging leaders of America. That's the topic of today's Bold and Blunt. And I'm your host, Cheryl Chumley, giving you a Christian conservative look at today's news, politics, culture, and events. Are you a parent of a child who is headed toward college in America? That used to be a bragging right for parents. That used to be a fine path for young people to travel. It basically prepared them for the rigors of life, helped them with life skills, and also educated them in the things that they wanted to go into in life. But nowadays, nowadays, of course, leftists have infiltrated college campuses and destroyed what used to be fine institutions in America because, hey, that's what leftists do. They destroy things. That's what they're known for. But in this instance, on college campuses, what we're talking about is the destruction of the minds and hearts of America's emerging leaders. So before I get into all that, I wanted to quickly mention that if you like Bold and Blunt, you can find Bold and Blunt wherever podcasts are offered, but also at WashingtonTimes.com and at edify.app. That is the online platform for faith-based podcasts. Bold and Blunt is among its esteemed offerings. So check it out, subscribe. And if you already do subscribe to Bold and Blunt, thank you. Thank you so much for your support. So let me give you an idea about what your kids are learning on college campuses. Campuspride.org has just handed out its first round 2022 social justice mini grant winners. And I wanna read right from campuspride.org's website about what are some of the areas that this organization is recognizing as worthy of award. On Texas State University, an award given to study the experience of trans students who have been dead named or misgendered by faculty members and what actions can mend the the resultantly, that's quoting right from this site, it should be resultant, impaired student institution relationship. Did you get that? They've handed out an award at Texas State University to somebody named Sam Owens to study the experience of trans students who have been victimized, let's put air quotes around that word, victimized by faculty members who refuse to call that student or that group of students by the student's pronouns of choice. And they're going to study the impacts to that student and how that poor student has now been prevented from getting a proper education because of the, what, PTSD that results from a boy who wants to be called a girl instead being called a boy by the professor or a girl who wants to be known as they instead being referred to as she or her by the professor. Here are some more. At Rochester, at Rochester Institute of Technology, an award given out to promote inclusive LGBTQ plus spaces within STEM education. Because we can't just have math and science be math and science. We have to put a political agenda behind it. We have to put an LGBTQ agenda into math and science learning. At the University of Eastern Michigan University, Eastern Michigan University, a grant, oh, this is a good one, to support a transgender community closet by providing free access to clothes, binders, underwear, makeup, and other gender affirming materials. Apparently because LGBTQ students can't afford to buy the clothes they need to dress in the opposite sex or whatever sex or pronoun they decide to be that day. They need an assortment of clothing and underwear and makeup 
which they can't afford because their sex changes on a day-to-day basis. And so they need more than the average bear's worth of clothing and makeup. University of California, Davis, an award given to support the Pride Festival, celebrating the LGBTQ plus community on campus, as well as in the greater Sacramento area. This is what your students are being treated to. This is what your children are being subjected to on today's college campuses. A headline from the blog crazyradicals.com. The word woman, and woman is in quotes, is not warmly welcomed by the woke of Wellesley College. This was written August 29th, 2021 on this blog page. In an editorial of May 13th, 2021, entitled, We're Not All Wellesley Women Anymore, What's Taking the College So Long to See That? We learn, this blogger writes, that because transgender students want more inclusive language to be used at the college, modes of expression must become ever more policed and free expression curtailed. This repression is being advocated by student journalists, mind you. Isn't that interesting? Those in the business of advancing free speech in America, of taking advantage of free speech in America. Their livelihoods depend on a thriving free speech culture. Want to shut down your free speech and my free speech because it's not deemed politically correct. It's deemed offensive. So let's go right to this Wesley College, Wellesley College, excuse me, piece that this blogger referenced. And it was in the Wellesley News, May 13th, 2021, entitled, as I already mentioned, We're Not All Wellesley Women Anymore. What's taking the college so long to see that? And among this editorial, among this opinion piece was the, the idea that and I'm quoting here, the lack of gender affirming language is one of the many continued affronts to the transgender community at Wellesley. The school's missions and values page states that, quote, Wellesley's mission is to provide an excellent liberal arts education to women who will make a difference in the world, end quote. This is followed by a list of values, including diversity, inclusion, and gender equality. This claim of valuing inclusivity and gender equality is contradictory to the language they use and the ways in which Wellesley may confirm applicants' gender status, such as requesting letters from healthcare providers, clergy, parents, and or teachers. To this extent, it comes across not as a way to openly accept non-men, but a mode to continue the erasure of transgender and non-binary students at Wellesley. Look, my takeaway from that is go to Wellesley and lose your mind. Non-men, I do believe that's called women or female. Glad to say that there is some backlash taking place on college campuses themselves from students who, students themselves who have become fed up with this ridiculous, chaotic way of thinking and have become outraged at the infiltration of the lunatic LGBTQ agenda taking over college campuses. From the New York Post, this story, January 15th, 2022, five college students speak out. We're fed up with campus wokeness. That is the headline. And the piece goes on to showcase just what the headline promises. Five students who are sick and tired of being told that they have to do things like call a boy a they or call a girl a he just because that psychologically deranged individual thinks that everybody in the world has to play into the delusions and deceptions that have polluted and corrupted his or her own mind. 
There is a student from Princeton University who is sick of the wokeness, a student from Alma College who is sick of the wokeness, a student from Allegheny College sick of the wokeness. And the quote from that story is, some people ask me, this student says, why are you a Republican? Aren't you Hispanic? And the student answers, yes, I am Hispanic, but that doesn't and shouldn't dictate my personal beliefs. The student goes on to say, I've faced some blowback, some blowback for being the president of Allegheny, Allegheny College's Republicans chapter. When I participated in a debate in my freshman year, for example, some people asked me, why are you a Republican? Aren't you Hispanic? Yes, I am Hispanic, but that doesn't and shouldn't dictate my personal beliefs. I don't believe that coming from a particular ethnic, social, or economic background means you have to conform to what the majority of that group believes politically. There's another student from Friends University in a sociology class. I disagreed with the professor on the gender wage gap in a paper and provided my sources. When my paper was returned, I saw do not agree wrong written in red pen. I've had professors mark down my grade for disagreeing with them politically, the student goes on to say. Look, we need more students who are willing to speak out against not just the leftist leaning professors that have taken over America's college campuses, but the woke students themselves who are insisting on these crazy beliefs being mainstreamed, being put into the minds of an entire college campus and spread out from there an entire nation that psychological disorders and behaviors are normal. There's a thing called gender dysphoria. It is a mental disorder and it's treatable, but it's not treatable by normalizing it and mainstreaming it and convincing the rest of the world that those very, very few who do suffer from gender dysphoria are the normal ones and the vast majority of people on college campus in this country and in the world who know that there are only two sexes that God created, male and female, in his own image, he created them. That the majority of people who believe that are the ones that are nuts. That's not so. That's the norm, two sexes. The abnormal is anything but two sexes. And yet college kids around America are being treated to woke cultures that tell them if they believe what's sane is sane, then they are in fact insane. And that the insane way of looking thing, looking at things is actually the sane. What a culture of confusion and chaos we are creating in this country. And I have a guest with me today. He is the chairman of an organization, a nonprofit, that deals with agendas and policies on college campuses around America. And his group has just commissioned this new YouGov poll about Americans' views of gender identity and what's taking place on college campuses regarding the LGBTQ movement. Ed Bartlett is his name. Ed, thank you so much for being here on Bold and Blunt. I really appreciate your time. It's my pleasure, Cheryl. So could you start by telling people a little bit about what SAVE is, the nonprofit? Sure. Uh, SAVE, and our website is saveservices.org. We're a 501c3. We're experts on the issue of Title IX, and Title IX is the famous federal law that, uh, well, originally was supposed to ban sex discrimination, but now it's gone in many other directions that nobody expected. (laughs) Uh, Specifically because of the LGBTQ movement, yes? Well, yes, that that pretty much sums it up. Um, It was actually literally the day after President Joe Biden uh, was sworn into office, he issued an executive order. And uh, the executive order was about preventing and combating discrimination on the basis of gender identity or sexual orientation. Um, But what the order was really designed to do was to do a a full-scale 
redefinition of the word sex. And that's what has caused an enormous Pandora's box of problems. And Americans are starting to see the light about this. I wanted to speak with you specifically about this new YouGov poll that came out. 63% of Americans oppose expanding definition of sex to include gender identity. That means that most Americans oppose the idea of individuals selecting their own sex, yes? Well, I don't think Americans are opposed to individuals who, who and we're talking about adults who have legitimate, thoughtful, medical basis for doing that. I right. believe there are rare instances that it is legitimate, but what's, what's happening is, and this has actually occurred in California where uh, teenage students who are experiencing, you know, maybe a bout of depression, um, a school counselor goes to that that student and says, you know what, that depression, maybe that's being caused by gender dysphoria. And dysphoria, this gender dysphoria means that, hey, you were born with a boy's body, but you are, your, your mentality or your mindset is of a girl or vice versa. And so, of course, then the next statement is, but we can't tell your parents about this because this is all hush hush. And it goes from there. Actually, in one case, it turned into a suicide by a girl who went through this whole process. It was actually gender transitioned. You know, we're starting to see polls in recent years, and and specifically there was a a new study that came out just a few weeks ago that showed rising suicide rates among youth who transition or who are transgendered. Can, Can you speak to that? Because it seems to me like there are too many adults in America now who are failing to protect America's youth from the LGBTQ campaign and movement. Yeah, I did hear about that poll, Cheryl. I don't know it in detail, um, but I don't think, I mean, that, that's one of the most troubling aspects of this new policy is it creates a shroud of secrecy between parents and their own children. Uh, parents are, are literally barred from even being told that their child is undergoing counseling, their child may be having some de- some depression, their child may be considering transition. They're barred from being told that. And of course, we know that one of the most important factors in a child's academic success is parental involvement. And that's exactly what's being eliminated under the guise of inclusion of gender identity. Tell me about some of the chaos that you guys at SAVE are seeing on college campuses due to this uh, new activism from the far left. So the, the, the situation on college campuses, there's, there's two uh, pieces to this. One of the, is the whole issue of women's sports. So uh, when a, a person, and I think everybody's heard about Leah Thomas. Yes. Uh, the... the the, the person he was born at birth as a male and then decided after, you know, he was about 18 or 19, he decided he really wanted to be a girl. So he took hormone therapy for a year and then he was allowed to compete in women's sports, well, in swimming. And of course, he was basically winning every competition that was out there. So anyway, so the whole women's sports issue is one facet of this. The other facet is what we'd like to call kangaroo courts, the the campus disciplinary committees that supposedly dispense justice, but really have no clue what the meaning of due process is. So do you have a good way of explaining in layman's terms the difference between transgender and transsexual? Cheryl, that's actually above my my pay scale. I I, I don't... the term tra- transgender is the far more common term. I, I'm not clear. I don't know what the definition of, of transsexual might be. Yeah, it's very confusing because when you go to try and search 
what seems to be a common place question online, you, you just run into this politically correct wall. And then you go down this rabbit hole of pronouns where, where people don't even want to report on somebody's biological sex. And it, it becomes very confusing to just get what should seem simple definitions. Well, I think that's partly by intention that it's designed to be confusing. And yes, there is there is an alphabet soup of terminology of ex- acceptable pronouns. Um, the list goes on and on. And I mean, shouldn't our schools be focusing on the three R's? Shouldn't they be looking at why are our, our schools slipping internationally? But instead, they're talking about uh, you know gender dysphoria and use of proper pronouns. This is crazy. It is crazy. And you guys, when you uh, missioned this poll from YouGov, you attempted to insert some clarity into this process because I understand that your survey included just six basic questions, starting with the definition of sex. And could you kind of run down what you found Americans responded to in terms of this very basic question, definition of sex? Yeah, we, we wanted to keep the survey very simple. So our, our very first question was, do you think we should keep the traditional biological definition of sex? And the answer was 63% of Americans said yes, keep it, keep it, keep it, stick to the traditional biological definition. Um, then we went on to ask about transgender participation in women's sports. There, the percentages became even more extreme. 71% said do not allow uh, you know, men who transition to female, don't let those persons participate in women's sports. It's just not fair to women. Uh, then we went on to ask about, uh, should we get parental consent before school counselors start, start talking about this gender dysphoria? 61% of parents said, or person said, yes, you have to get parental consent. So really across the board for all of the questions we asked, we found just a pervasive rejection of this concept of redefining sex to meet a political agenda. And honestly, it, it, it sounds like vast majorities of American citizens are on board with the logical view of transgenderism and biological sex, but uh, it, it appears to me interesting that only 63% of Americans polled for this said to keep the traditional biological definition. It, it seems to me that that should be more like 80 or 90%. Well, I, I, I tend to agree with you, Cheryl. I, and what we're seeing here is a pretty sharp division, political division. When we look at this poll, poll results by political party, we found that strong majorities of Republicans and majorities of independents want the traditional biological definition. But when you ask Democrats, uh, there the the majority swung the other direction. Uh, They wanted to expand the definition. Yeah, Democrats, party of confusion and chaos, it seems like. Question number five that you asked was about the presumption of innocence or guilt for college disciplinary hearings. What what was the logic with that? Yeah, so the, the, the new director of the Office for Civil Rights, that's in the Department of Education, uh, her name is Car- uh, uh, Kathleen Lamont, okay? And when she went for her Senate hearings, she was asked directly, do you believe in the presumption of innocence? All she would say was, she said that persons should, uh, members of the disciplinary committee should be willing to consider the possibility that the accused student is maybe innocent. Now, that is not the presumption of innocence. That's the presumption of guilt. So we were very troubled by Catherine Lamont's statements during her Senate hearing. So we included this question. We found that 87% of Americans want the presumption of innocence uh, for college disciplinary hearings. So uh, 
the the intent of that is obvious to to those on the Republican side, the conservative side of things. But I, I'm sure you had something more specific in mind about where a presumption of guilt versus innocence could lead on campuses. What what, what was your logic behind asking that question? Well, a lot of colleges now use a type of investigation called victim centered. Victim centered, and and now remember, investigations are supposed to be impartial and fair. Right. But victim centered means the opposite. It means that we're going to presume the guilt of the accused, and we're going to assume the truthfulness of the accuser. Well, that is that is the antipathy of the presumption of innocence. Is the antipathy of fairness? Uh, is the antipathy of what we think of as due process, which is based on the 14th Amendment. Is this an extension of what we saw under former President Barack Obama, where he kind of, uh, his Department of Education, I think it was, fiddled with a similar definition so that on campus uh, men became under attack or very vulnerable to accusations of sexual harassment or sexual assault. Is that an extension of this? Yes, very much so. If, if you if you go back in the you know a decade ago, this is when the infamous uh, policy it was called the Dear Colleague Letter it came out in April of 2011, and it removed all sorts of constitutionally based due process protections for the accused. Well, <laughs> no surprise, uh, students, almost all male students, were suspended, expelled. And no surprise, many of them sued their universities. And again, no surprise, uh, a lot of them actually won their lawsuits. And this continues to the present time. Okay, so that that would help explain or lay the groundwork for you to kind of um, explain a little bit more about your sixth and final question on this survey, definition of sexual harassment. Right. So, so one of the outgrowths of this policy back in 2011 um, was to expand the definition of sexual harassment to include any statement made that might be simply upsetting or unwelcome. And I'll give you an example. For example, one of the colleges in Baltimore uh, included unwanted flirting as an example of sexual harassment. Well, the effect of such broad definitions was to actually shut down free speech, both by students and by faculty members, because they couldn't, you know, they couldn't even tell a joke without somebody looking at them sideways or accusing them of sexual harassment. So, um, one of the, the good things about the regulation that came out two years ago under Betsy DeVos was to scale back these overly broad definitions of sexual harassment so that First Amendment free speech protections would be respected. So anyway, so that's why we asked this question. And we found that uh, 50%, 57% of respondents said keep the current definition in order to protect free speech. And 43% said to expand the definition, which is alarming because my takeaway from that is it's very difficult to be a male on college campuses in America today because you're vulnerable to all kinds of accusations that could lead to you being punished for crimes that you didn't even really commit. That's certainly true, and it's, it's had a chilling effect on free speech of faculty members. If you're a faculty member and, and you are not woke, uh, if you are, you know, if you have a point of view that may differ from the sort of the politi- politically accepted approach, um, you, you can find yourself, you know, out being charged with, you know, sexual harassment or, you know, a variety of other very poorly defined offenses. And that's happening, you know, we read stories almost every week. We just that just happened at Georgetown University, uh, involving a professor there. So, yeah, it's, it is due process and free speech has been crushed uh, on many college campuses. Hmm. 
Well, our, our time's at an end, so just finish with this. My, my look at this poll and these numbers is, is basically leading to a conclusion that it's still a little bit alarming. I, I don't know if I should take an optimistic or negative approach to these numbers. How do you kind of summarize your findings from this poll? Well, I'll tell you, I was not horribly uh, surprised by the results. Uh, I mean, when I when I talk to persons who are, you know, they consider themselves to be woke, they truly believe that yeah, we need to expand definitions of sex. I mean, it, it, it is such a an ideological mindset that has become, you know, call it indoctrination if you wish to. So this kind of uh, this is more or less what I expected to see from the survey. But yeah, it is troubling that so many people would, you know, would want to uh, expand definitions of sexual harassment to, to, to clamp down on free speech. It is troubling. I guess the, uh, the, the ray of sunshine is that we at least know, politically speaking, uh, who gets the blame here, uh, mostly the Democrats. And so that kind of gives a direction in some action that American citizens can take, especially coming into this year's elections. Ed Bartlett, I want to thank you so much for being on Bold and Blunt. Fascinating poll. And thank you for the work you do at SAVE. Thank you. Good to chat with you, Cheryl. Take care. Take care and do your due diligence before you pay those pricey fees and costs to send your kids to today's colleges in America. It's a sad, sad situation that our higher places of learning have fallen to such lows, to such woke cultural lows. But the bright light at the end of the tunnel is that there are indeed some students on college campuses along with parents around the nation who are fighting back against this culture because they know how damaging it is not just to america but to their own kids mental health thank you for listening i want to remind you if you like bold and blunt you can get bold and blunt at edify.app at washingtontimes.com or anywhere podcasts are offered You can also subscribe to my three times a week newsletter at WashingtonTimes.com that contains all my commentaries that I write, as well as my twice weekly Bold and Blunt podcast. And one more quick note, pick up a copy of my latest book, Locked Down, The Socialist Plan to Take Away Your Freedom. It's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, or on my own website, CherylChumley.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you, subscribers, for subscribing. Tune in next time. And in the meanwhile, stay blunt, stay bold.